Hey, this is Jeff, and I just have a short one today. I recently did a follow-up to Sneak and Detection in New Vegas, answering questions from the comments about scenarios I didn't cover in the original video. In the process, I realized I said more than a year ago that I'd released the outfit I made for the thumbnail as a mod, which, due to a combination of procrastination and bad memory, I finally just did. Better late than never? Now, in my defense, there's a reason I didn't just package it and upload it as soon as somebody asked. Short answer, the quick and dirty version I made for the thumbnail was nowhere close to releasable as is, but more on that at the end. I don't make videos for every mod I release, but since the suggestion for this one came from the video comments and not the Nexus, I figured I would. There's not much to it, just the outfit, no quest or anything. You find it just off the road that goes south out of Good Springs, right before you get to I-15 and Gene skydiving. Stat-wise, it's identical to pre-war casual wear, so there's no reason for it not to be available right from the start of the game. The little gully where you rescue the Good Springs settler during the tutorial with Sunny is over there. You can see Prim in the distance down I-15. There's the road sign and Gene skydiving. And right here we have a car pulled over by the road. Not far away, a skeleton and a duffel bag behind a rock. Hawaiian shirt, Panama hat, and a hastily scrawled note. Sloquacious. I think El Medico dealt me bad peyote. Pulled over and puked blood. If I don't make it, the wheels and threads are yours. I could have just put it in Doc Mitchell's house, but I have this nightmare that you install every armor mod on the Nexus and you can't get out the door because there are crates piled to the ceiling. Plus, I thought it was more immersive to give a vague hint as to its origin. I also could have added them to the random inventory lists for clothing vendors, which is kind of immersive in its own way, but if you think a Hawaiian shirt and Panama hat would be the perfect outfit for a vodka and jet-fueled road trip from Good Springs to the Strip, this way you're guaranteed to find some. They have custom world objects, not that it's likely you'd just drop them somewhere if you went to the trouble of downloading a mod to get a unique outfit. But if you keep your equipment and souvenirs on shelves in your player home, you can tell them apart. And like most of the outfits in Koito Ergo Sum, they're unisex. So if you're playing a female courier, it doesn't just look like a pre-war dress or something. Now, why couldn't I just zip the version I made for the thumbnail and upload it to the Nexus? Well, I know a lot of you like under the hood stuff, so here's the scoop. First, I foolishly made it part of the detection test course, which isn't a big deal. I just had to make a new mod and move some resource files around. The Hawaiian shirt is a straight-up retexture of the vanilla pre-war casual wear. Make a new texture in GIMP, create a texture set in the GEC that points to the new texture file, make a copy of the pre-war casual wear armor object, and assign the new texture set to both the wearable version and the ground object. Done. Except it wasn't quite done. I still needed a female version. Fortunately, like I said, most of the outfits in Koito Ergo Sum are unisex, so I already had resources for a female shirt and slacks laying around. Assemble an outfit, use the new texture file, now it's done. But then there was the hat. The hat in the thumbnail was photoshopped white in the thumbnail. It didn't actually exist in-game. I don't know why, but if you copy a headwear object in the GEC or create one from scratch, it ends up rotated 90 degrees in-game. The only way I've ever found to fix it is to go into the resource file for the 3D model and rotate it 90 degrees the other way to compensate, which is why I went the lazy route for the thumbnail. Making a playable hat wasn't a big deal for the mod, but <laughs> this is where the video is as much about how I go down rabbit holes as it is about modding techniques. If I was going to have to edit the 3D model anyway, I thought I might as well make it look like a Panama hat instead of just a fedora recolored white which was a fairly subtle change, just folding down and extending the brim and back. I actually rotate it with NIFScope after exporting from Blender for reasons that are too deep in the weeds for this video. Then, just like the Hawaiian shirt, new texture in GIMP, new texture set in GEC, copy the pre-war vanilla hat, and assign the new texture set. And now we get to the dangerous part, getting it into the game. Not dangerous in a technical sense, dangerous as in, how deep does the rabbit hole go? You can make a case, grossly oversimplified but not entirely invalid, that Koito Ergo Sum exists because I wanted a more immersive way to get new outfits into the game than just putting a footlocker somewhere near the player's starting location. The very first armor mods I published on the Nexus were for Oblivion, and if I remember correctly I just added them to merchant inventories. I did a few more for Fallout 3 and put them in containers in wasteland locations with notes and a bit of environmental storytelling. Then, I wanted a plausible, lore-friendly rationale for having outfits with decent damage resistance that still looked like street clothes, which ended up as Mea Culpa, a whole quest mod with a voice-acted character and a fairly complicated dungeon to explore. 
Maggie, the pre-war ghoul, was obviously a precursor to Larry, the pre-war ghoul in Quo Vagis, and that ultimately led to Koito Ergo Sum. Anyway, the absolutely cheapest, laziest way to do it would be simply call it done right here and make the player use a console command to get them, which is what I did for the thumbnail. But I obviously wasn't going to do that for a mod I was going to upload to the Nexus. I already talked about why I decided against just adding them to the appropriate random inventory lists for clothing vendors, and with an uncharacteristic display of restraint, I went back to my Fallout Armor mod roots and the tried-and-true wasteland container with a hint of backstory. Oh, container, because Bethesda physics. It's a tiny bit easier just to drop them in the game world, but it's one thing when a stim pack falls through the floor or glitches into space, never to be seen again, but it would be pretty disappointing if that happened to a unique outfit. And that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment, and I'll see you soon.